Hello and welcome to another SQL screencast. This is Michael Fudge. I'm your host and this day we'll be talking about how to create your own custom functions in SQL and why you would want to do this and also we'll take a look at how you can use these functions in your views, your table designs and your regular queries. So let's get started. It's hard to dispute the usefulness of functions There's all sorts of functions that are available that are built into SQL Server to let you do all sorts of stuff. There's date functions, there's string functions, Oop, always messed that up. My name's four characters long. There's all sorts of different functions. We're customizing the functions comes into play is you can build your own functions that solve your own set of business rules or problems. So with these functions you can um, do all sorts of interesting things that that maybe play out for the the programmer at or the end user. Let's go back to an oldie but a goodie for example. Um, in a previous screencast we wrote this view called V Fudge Mart Managers and it was based on this logic that says um, if your job title is sales associate um, then you aren't a manager. What I'd like to do is is write this as a function because I, I personally think this this sits better as a function than it does uh, as a view. You can still have a view that does it but that view would in turn use the function. The function has a lot more logic as you'll, as you'll see. Alright, so here's a, here's a function that I wrote. It's a custom function. This function is going to um, let us know whether a given employee is management material or not based on, again, the same conditional logic that their job title is not sales associate. Again, wrapping it up in a function um, lets you use the same logic in a lot of different places. So you're going to get a lot more mileage out of your logic this way. Let me take you through what a function construct is all about then I'll show you how to use it, then I'll show you how you can really extend its use into your views and tables. Okay, so to start out, all functions have a create function at the top. This is the name of the function. Um, this is the input that goes into the function. So this is another variable here. It says employee ID of type int. There's one input into the function. The function is going to return a bit. It's going to return a yes or a no and this defines the function here begin and and our function is it really always has three parts in it it has you always declare the return value and the very last thing you do is return the value and the glue in the middle is what figures out um, what to return so this is really the meat of our function and what I'm doing here is I'm saying run the select statement select everything from fudge my employees where the employee ID equals whatever you gave me as input and the job title is not sales associate run that if a row exists then our result should be yes otherwise our result should be no plain and simple the tough part about functions is not writing them but um, <laughs> debugging them to make sure that they're correct I mean anybody can write this function but you have to verify that what you wrote is indeed correct before you start using it all over the place um, Okay, so let me run this function here, execute it. You'll see it says command completed successfully. If I execute it again, um, I get there is already an object named is management in the database. That's where um, your drop function comes in. You can write a full script by saying drop drop function that and then go and then create function. So then I can rerun the script over and over again as it deletes the function first and then recreates it. So let's go ahead and use this function now. So select um, everything from Fudge Mart employees. Let's do this to start. There you go. That's everyone. Now let's just grab the meaningful stuff. How about the employee um, last name, the employee first name? and how about their job title alright looks good there you go last name first name job title now I'm gonna 
um, add another column here that says whether or not they're uh, in management. Is in, do you, there's my function, I'm calling it, and I have to pass in the employee ID. And I'm going to say as is manager. And there you go. So again, Ariel Photo, sales associate, not a manager. Dustin DeWin, sales, of phone, sales associate, not a manager. Um, out of money, department manager, obviously a manager. I'm the CEO, so I'm a manager. Neato, huh? So just like you would use, um, you know, just like you would use, you know, year of employee hire date as year hired, just as you would do that, um, you can use your own custom function in a select statement. And likewise, I can take this select and uh, create a view off of it. V as you can create a view off of it. And now I have a view that I can use Now I have a view that I can use to get the same information back out. Oh, if I wanted to make this view correct, I should have a where in here, right? Where, where um, is management uh, is one, right? So let me let me um, alter the view here. Alter the view here. Run that. Okay, made my view, and then I run this, and now I just get managers. There you go. So there's all my different managers and the year they were hired. Exactly. All right. In this last step, I'd like to show you something that you can, uh, something really cool you can do with functions. So uh, in our table that we have here, uh, let me see if I can bring it up here. I'll use Object, Object Explorer. Uh, Fudge Mart employees. I have uh, all these different columns. Sometimes you want to add a column that you can't insert data into. It's just merely a calculation of other values. So, for example, I'm going to use my custom function to add a column called employee is manager in here. I can't, um, the column's read only. I can't update or, or set values into the column. But what I can do is, is determine whether or not someone is a manager programmatically um, through the function. So, check this out. So I'm going to say uh, alter table uh, fudge mart employees I'm going to add a column uh, let's call it uh, employee is manager as now normally you would say employee is manager bit right and then you'd be done and or you'd say bit not null default zero and then you'd have to you know write your own code to for each employee determine whether or not they're manager but we already know how to do that we have a function called dbo is management and you give it an employee ID and it will tell you whether or not they're manager so I want this column to be aliased as that function I run that and it says command completed successfully now if you actually check out the object explorer now this is kinda neat go down here look at my columns I see that I have an employee is manager and it's a computed column bit null so if I were to actually go ahead and do my select now select everything from fudge mart employees what you'll see is there's a column called employee is manager it's a bit column and this is not stored anywhere it's actually calculated on the fly by running the function that we wrote, the is manager function. Neato. All right. Well, this is our introduction to functions. Hopefully, it gives you an idea of what you can, what is possible with functions. The neat thing about using them is uh, you write them once. Once you know they work, you can use them in your views. You can also use them in your tables. Cool. All right. This has been another screencast. Hopefully, you'll have a nice day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.